Uh, greetings and welcome to a continuing series of uh, educational rounds at Seclair, an integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by uh, two of my colleagues and one very special colleague. So on my left would be... Alex. I'm a PA student from Duquesne University. And on my right... I'm Ashley. I'm an art therapy intern at Seton Hill University. And as always, every week, what we attempt to do is bring you some type of knowledge perhaps you hadn't been exposed to in the past or that can you incorporate in your daily life and actually make a difference actually make a difference. And today I'm so privileged to join, have us joined by uh, a dear friend of ours who has been a guest on this show before, and that uh, would be Nancy Fitzgerald. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nancy. My pleasure, Jim. Great to see you again. <laughs> it's certainly nice to see you too. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background, Nancy, and where you're, where you're coming from today? Well, my background is that I was a chemistry major in college. I taught um, physical science and chemistry for a while in the Pittsburgh City Schools. Then um, I took a leave of absence to go to chemical engineering school and ended up working for Alcoa, the Aluminum Company of America, for 20 years. I retired from there when I was 52. And since then, I have been free to work and give and um, contribute and learn as I choose. Uh, soon after I retired from Alcoa, I found A Course in Miracles, which for me has been the deepest, truest, most practical guidebook that I've ever known. And I'm still working with it more and more instead of less and less. Um, there's more things I do to share it. I leave you want to ask a question or make a well, comment? You mentioned I, I was caught there. You retired at 52, and you felt a call to teach and serve and give. Could you, could you say a little more about that? Well, um, I actually was able to convince myself I could volunteer for retirement at that stage when there was a lot of layoffs happening um, because I, I found a, a, another course called um, Your Money or Your Life which helped me figure out um, that I what enough money would be for me and to realize that with what I'd saved and what I thought I could live on, that I could do that. So I just sort of went off thinking the worst would happen and I'd get a part-time job, which I, I worked for money for a few uh, different things, but more what I wanted to work for than what um, was needed to make money. So quite often what we uh, what we do here, Nancy, is help people to understand the difference between pleasure and joy. And certainly uh, money can buy a lot of uh, materialistic things that can give you m perhaps much pleasure. But it sounds to me like at age 52 uh, you are looking to have some joy and spread some joy in your life. Yes, I found that I'd gone as far as seemed to make sense for me in my career. And instead, I was ready to just choose whatever I wanted to do. It seemed like for the longest time, I would work really hard so I would be ready for later. So I, would, I worked hard in high school so I could get to college. I worked hard in college so I could get a job. I worked hard at my job, um, and then I switched jobs even because it didn't seem like I could keep doing uh, teaching for the whole my whole career then I didn't actually last what many people would consider a whole career even in engineering I guess it just finally seemed like um, I was doing what other people expected me to do and I was ready to explore and find out what matched me better so you began to do some introspection on yourself. Uh, these uh, young people that are with me today, Nancy, they're in a, uh, the physician's assistance program in particular is a, what I call a torture test. That's, uh, <laughs> that's more of a endurance run than a, a learning experience. And if you stand at the end, you win. Uh, so these young people are, are subjected to a great deal of uh, stress and anxiety. Uh, but they're basically trying to ram four years of medical schooling into two. Uh, Ashley is in the midst of her master's degree, uh, and then you, I'm sure you know what's involved in uh, all of that. Uh, plus, they're trying to uh, 
integrate the social life, uh, romantic interests in there. Uh, so what what I'm hearing is you're at age 52, where where most people are in the in the midst of their uh, climax of their career, you had a moment of clarity. So could you tell us about, a little bit about that moment of clarity? I'm always interested in that. Well, I think the light bulb went on for me when during uh, during the practice of the nine steps of your money or your life, I realized that I could in fact retire and have enough money to live on, that I would have enough. I knew I had been able to quantify what enough was for me. I'd been pointed back to myself to ask myself for each expenditure whether um, I felt I'd gotten satisfaction and joy from that expenditure of life energy. It was converted to life energy and not just dollars. And um, and did it did that expenditure align with my life purpose and values? So as I did that for a year or so, and I finally realized that numerically it seemed to work. It, it would mean that I would be financially independent, not wealthy, but knowing that I didn't have to work for somebody else to have enough money to continue to do whatever I chose to do, whatever that happened to be. That took a lot of courage, and there are many people out there who live their life on wishes and hopes and wait for something to happen, And but what I'm hearing is you made it happen. I did make the choice. I actually volunteered to my supervisor that if he needed to lay someone off, I knew there was pressure to have more and more people numbers reduced, that I would be willing to go. I've never seen such a relieved supervisor in my life. <laughs> they gave me another two or three months to finish up what I was working on and um, gave me a, a kind of a package. I, I had a reduced pension that started early and um, I got to 65, 66, then I took Social Security. Now I feel absolutely rich, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have all of it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that, that's really tremendous. So uh, you, you made a choice and you switched your life uh, totally around. What type of uh, comments, what type of observations, questioning, criticisms did you get from those around you, those uh, in your relationship circle? I don't, if people were talking about it too much, I, I don't remember that I heard one way or the other. The people who did say something were kind of um, amazed and glad for me. Uh, it was okay with them if I went off and did that. I didn't relocate. I was still at that time in Pittsburgh. And um, I just started doing more of the things that I liked. I volunteered more with my church at the time. I um, actually took up a consulting job, part-time consulting job on um, developing a diversity training course for the Pittsburgh police for a little while. Um, I traveled. I was able to help out with other people around when, when something, when somebody was ill, instead of being in a nine to five schedule forever, I was able to say, okay, I can go stay with that person or take food or whatever. And what you always talk about, what I always hear from you is kind of the philosophy that we espouse here, where is to be in every moment and live in every moment and pay attention to, on purpose, to what is happening right in front of us. And that's, could you tell us a little, could you share with uh, the folks out there, the folks who's watching this, some of the, uh, the students here, what it's like to live that type of life? What if it's like to actually participate in your life? Well, I have to say that it's it's been a gradual process, and it feels to me like one one thing that happens is you feel you literally feel lighter and lighter. Um, there's fewer and fewer things that um, are agitating or upsetting, and at this point, I'm practiced in watching my mind for the things that do upset me. So when I notice something, I've got I've gotten down to some pretty um, subtle things. But the upset can be can feel just as big because now it's become a signal to me. And so whenever there's anything that's an upset, I'm noticing it in some way and um, basically looking at it and saying, okay, I see you. Look at that. I'm upset because, and I can name it for myself. And then I say, I don't want to be, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be in that ego thought system. I'd rather be 
in joy or happiness. And so I'm going to set that aside and leave it be taken care of on its own. And I'm going to go back to focusing on something that's true. So that's, again, we get back to conscious choice. And when you say you watch yourself, that uh, tells me that what I basically operate under is uh, mindfulness-based cognitive behavioral therapy where we ask people to become the observer behind the thinker and that's kind of what you're uh, what you're saying to us uh, tell me uh, tell me Alex would would you like to live a life like uh, Nancy <laughs> yeah sounds pretty good <laughs> would you like to be free from the anxiety you would step out of that bubble and turmoil that quicksand of uh, anxiety and depression absolutely I wouldn't. <laughs> well, we're, <laughs> how about you, Ashley? Oh, definitely. So in, uh, in our next podcast, what we're going to be exploring is the actual Course in Miracles that Nancy uh, got involved in and incorporated into her life and uh, really is a, for her is a design for living and which she can share with us and share with you. It's uh, not just telling someone when life gives you lemons make lemonade, it's actually giving you the pitcher and the water and the instructions and the spoon and, and, and the lemons and everything that you need to actually <laughs> do it. You need to actually do it. So we'll be joining Nancy again at our next podcast. Mm -hmm.